Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're going to be talking about just mock functions. And we're going to break down some of the concepts around why you would want to mock a function and spy on that function as well. Again, these are some of these core concepts and vocabulary words that we're going to be using throughout this series. It's stuff that you're going to need as foundational knowledge for when we start testing our React components. So let's get going on that as we create fake functions using just mock. So in this video is where things might go off the deep end for you just a little bit. And I'm going to hopefully uh, make this immediately obvious what's going on, why we're doing it and how it could be advantageous. So what we're going to be doing is showing you how we can mock a function. Okay. And this example is going to be a little crazy because you're not necessarily going to see the benefit out of it exactly, but that's okay. All we want to focus on is the implementation right now. And I'm going to comment out this test total. What we're going to be testing is simply the add function. However, we're not going to be having access to the add function and therefore this whole test will break. Add is not defined. Now what we want to go ahead and do is export or I'm not export. We want to create a new variable and this is going to be const add. Now what this is going to be equal to is a just dot F N. Okay. So this is going to be really interesting here where if we just simply do just F N you can see that we're still receiving undefined here and things break. However, what we're not getting is we're not getting the error where add itself is not defined. Add is now defined. It's just an empty function. And this might immediately strike you as being weird, right? Well, why the heck are we having an empty function? More importantly, well, why are we having an empty function uh, that isn't actually doing anything? Why are we testing this empty function? Well, the overall goal here eventually isn't for this to test the empty function itself, but to test the function when we don't have access to that function, right? And so here, this is not going to work because obviously we're not going to have, you know, the three and seven be accurate. But if we comment out one of these and then we say our just function is simply going to be an arrow function that returns three, you're going to see our tests pass. Now, what I did there is I simply had a callback in this just function that determined what this function would automatically return. And as any time you ran add, regardless of which variables or which numbers you passed into it, the answer is going to be three. So it's not actually running add at all. So this is immediately sort of odd, right? Because, well, hey, what's going on here, right? Well, why, why the heck would we do this? Now, some instances in which you're going to be mocking functions, and that's what this is. It's called a mock function. And again, I like to get the jargony stuff out of here. And for the most part, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, a mock function is a fake function that's going to give you some results. Now, these can be async. These can be synchronous. They can return a promise. They can return some data. They can do a whole bunch of stuff for you. And you can even load a function from a dependency and turn it into a mock. For instance, let's say I had a database call and I don't actually want that database call to hit the database. Well, in some of these instances, what I could do is actually load up that, that call and then turn it into a mock. And then what we could determine is that that function would even be run. Okay. So this is all sort of funny. Let's go ahead and try this in another example here. So in the next video, what I'm be doing is trying the same thing in a more practical example. Uh, Cause all I wanted to get out of this was to show you that we could use just.fn to create a fake function. And this fake function is going to be here. Now, another interesting test we could run here. Let's go ahead and get this one at least back to the way it was. And let's comment this out. We could use this sort of test to make sure this function was even called. We could say expect add and then we could or not exp export expect uh it's funny my hands are just so used to typing that and we could say expect to have been called and even though the text size on this is a lot of times um what we want to be saying is to have been called times t-i-m-e-s 
here, and we wanted to say, hey, we expect that after we run this add function, we expect that add was called one time, okay, which obviously is going to pass because we're calling it one time. If we were to call it two times, you can see this has now failed. Expected mock functions to have been called one time, but it was called two times. Now, this is a function that we're going to be using or a method that we're going to be using a lot in React. For instance, when you click on something and maybe you have some method that's actually run, maybe it's an API call or something like that, you're going to want to see if this is called one time. So what we're going to be doing is mocking the API call, and then we're going to be checking to make sure that call was called. And we can even check to make sure it was called with what? So let's go ahead and get rid of this and we could say to have been called and then with. Now with is going to take a set of parameters and we could just say to have been called with two and one or one and two. And you can see this is again passing. Now if I were to change any of this as in, hey, if we were to say to have been called with one and three, this function breaks because, well, the argument or the add wasn't called with these numbers. Now this is kind of in, I don't know, a dumb and asinine example here because we can see we're calling this right here. But once we get into React, when you click a button, we're going to essentially fire off a click on that button. We're gonna say, click this button, right? And then instead of actually checking uh, some of the, the, you know, to see if the state has changed or something, we're going to check to see if some of the functions inside of that have been called by saying, hey, we're going to see if they've been called, and we're going to make sure they've been called with the proper arguments. Because sometimes arguments are coming in from form fields, and sometimes they're coming in from props, and sometimes they're coming in from different places. In this way, it's a lot less asinine to check this to see if it's been called with these things, if the uh, values are coming in from different areas, okay? So this video is really just going to be a sort of base skills that we're working with here. And you can see that we can create our functions and test them just like this this. Now what we're going to be doing in the next video is we're going to be testing the add function, but we're going to be testing it as if it was an external dependency of the, uh, the total function. And it's going to allow us to sort of unit test total in a way without actually testing add. It's going to be very interesting. Okay. Now, again, these are just some core skills here. And once we get into React, a lot of this stuff is going to totally click. But what I wanted to do is technically click for you first. So that way, when we're getting into the uh, theoretical stuff or, or how we're testing in React, you don't have to even think about creating a just test function. Now, again, this can return anything you'd like. Um, you know, if you wanted to, you could even return X and Y and return X plus Y y here and then of course this one's going to work as well and our all of our tests are going to pass now uh but this right here is recreating our our code which is just totally ridiculous and, and totally unnecessary um but again so what we're going to be doing in the next video is we're going to break things out into their own modules and then we're going to use just to mock one of the modules and we're going to see exactly how that process works okay so as always this is scott with level up tutorials uh, i hope this is your first introduction to mocking again when i first learned about mocking i was thinking like i thought we wanted to test the code right not create fake code but there are some very real instances and in where you're going to want to create fake code to have your tests uh, perform reliably. That's not to say you'll ever want to test a fake function. You're mostly going to be testing something like an integration test and then adding in a fake function in there so that test will pass 100% of the time and super fast, okay? So again, these are just some core skills and I just wanted to get this technically out of the way so you knew how to create a just mock function. Okay, so in the next video, we're gonna do just that. We're gonna mock an entire module rather than mocking just a function. Okay, so thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.